Oh, I'm going to show you my fixed up. Here we've got this Corona adding machine. Um, which the original name of this was a uh, portable adding machine. And I'm sure you can really see it on the front here, it's kind of worn off. But it says uh, manufactured by Corona Tupperware Company for portable adding machine company. Um, this is a fairly early one as far as I can tell. Um, given by these oval shaped keys. I believe the later ones switched to round keys. Um, and the very first one said portable up here instead of Corona. So it's not the very first one, but it's uh, pretty early as far as I can tell. Uh, sometime from the mid to late 1920s, I believe. Um, this machine does not work. The keyboard is fairly stiff. Um, you really have to push the keys in there. You see they're kind of sticky. Um, it's clear. Um, if you enter something, we can get back here. Let's enter something like 78. And if we get back here and watch the risers here, oh, I do move somewhat. Let's try entering something in these two columns. So it does work somewhat, but the handle doesn't doesn't spring backwards. And you notice that these first two columns here always rise up. Not sure if that's intentional or not. Um, I'm missing two keys. I may or may not have replacements for that. You can see we've got the total key up here. This is supposed to be subtotal, it says non-add. I think non-add is supposed to be one of these. So if I can find a subtotal key, I can move the non-add to one of these. And the other one's supposed to be non-print. Um, this is clear this way and repeat that way, even though the labels are worn off there. However, the most concerning thing about this machine is this. Yeah, that's not a good sign. So, let's take the covers off and see what's floating around in there. Um, hopefully it's just, you know, something has come loose and not something is broken. Some kind of giant screw in the end of the handle here. I don't see if this will come out. Of course not. It's probably glued in place by dried grease. So I'll see if I can get that off. Um, But there's just two screws in the front and there's some more screws in the back. But I want to get this off first so that I have something to push against when I push against this. Okay. There we go. Get that off and then we can get the screwdrivers too fast. Why don't you see me take a bunch of screws out? Oh, so I pulled, took the two screws out of the back, two screws out of the front, took the two keys off here. See if we can get this off of here now. It's hanging up on the. There we go. It's hanging up on the. Some back here. Alright, so. We have. So some kind of sticker. I don't know what that's from. We have a thumbtack, and we can see one of the problems already. This spring here is completely detached, so that's interesting. That would explain why it doesn't return all the way. I see there's a piece of string here. I don't know what that's about. It's a piece of paper there. There's a Small broken rivet. Figure out where that came from. We can replace it. So, I'm not exactly sure. So, there's a string here, which looks like it's been broken. And there's a string here. So, I'm wondering if this is how it's supposed to work. That was attached there, 
And then the spring was attached here, maybe. Certainly an interesting setup. I haven't seen something like that before. And then we got this, which is broken. So obviously we can find a new piece of string, I'm sure I have something, some kind of string I can use here. So that might be okay. Um, this, I don't know exactly what this is. It's some kind of giant disc, but you can see it looks like it has a, a brake band on the back side, which is non-functional because the spring's off. You can see that or not, but there's some kind of brake band here with the spring detached. I'm not quite sure exactly what the point of that is. Um, okay, and other than that, the only other thing to take a note of is just how dirty this machine is. It's very dirty. Um, this is sticky. So I think that this machine is just going to need some generic cleaning for the most part. So uh, I guess what I'll start doing is looking in to see what will easily come apart. Um, I see that looks like there's snap rings here on these shafts, so maybe if I pull those, the keyboard might come out. We can get a better look what's under that. The keyboard came out pretty easily. Um, the clips on this side, if I can find one here, I'm not sure. Well, they're on here somewhere. The clips on this side were a lot easier to remove, more like. Um, just a snap wire clips rather than um, snap rings like that side. So I took them off this side. I'll show you when I find one. There's one. They're just these little, little clips like that, a lot easier to remove. So took those off, pulled the two shafts out, and the key will basically just lift it off. Um, see, it's a nice little assembly here. Um, one of the smallest full keyboards I've worked on, I think. Pretty small. Um, so it's just you know your standard thing. The pins come out the bottom, and then these shafts go back as part of the machine cycle, and until one of these tabs hits the pin sticking out of the keyboard. You can see some of these are sticky, so have to be cleaned up. Some of them are not too bad. Uh, we're gonna clean them all up anyway. Um, the print mechanism looks like it's gonna have to be. Redone. I'm not sure if you can see how dirty that is, but you know the dirt is all the way down in there and in all these moving parts. So I'll we'll see um, how far that will come apart. Let's see if we can get that cleaned out. Um, and the keyboard itself, let me see if we, we can get that cleaned up too. This is a Still pretty stiff there, so might be worthwhile to see how that comes apart. It looks actually like you can pull these shaft here and a shaft here out, and these whole things might drop off. So might see about that. Um, so yeah, probably just some more disassembly here. Um, you can see the nice giant piles of dirt down in the bottom there. That mechanism down there is almost completely covered, so definitely gonna have to take some more of this apart and see what we can clean up. See actually if the bottom comes off of here. Might be worthwhile to check that also. Um, hey, you know what? I see something down in there. Right there, that little plastic nub looks like the missing piece of the repeat mechanism nub. If I can get that out of there. I think that's what that is. Yeah, so this could actually go on there. And that's your repeat or clear. That's nice. I don't think I'll find any of the missing keys down in there, but Good to find that, that's cool. Um, so yeah, more disassembly, and see how it goes. Uh, 
I'm going to go this thing pretty much as far apart as it's going to come. Um, I really wanted to take this main shaft here out, but this piece is taper pinned on, this piece is taper pinned on, and there's another piece in the middle that's also taper pinned on, and I can't get any of the taper pins out. Um, I didn't try heating them with a torch, but I really don't want to do that. But I tried, um, there's another one also in another piece back here that won't come out. This one I tried first. I tried, you know, obviously I tried punching them all out. They didn't move at all. Um, then I tried drilling the end just a little bit to, you know, see if I could get, because both, all these table pins were, you know, a little bit proud of the housing. So I tried drilling in a little bit to see if, you know, if my punch was down inside the housing, um, if that would knock on loose, but it didn't. They, none of them will budge at all. So I think that's about where we're stuck with. Um, so, see what's left in here. This, I was able to get most of the register assembly off of this by kind of like wiggling this shaft out. Now it's kind of stuck on, on this piece, but it's kind of able to like wiggle the shaft out and then slide some of the pieces off this end. So the only thing that is still stuck on here is this. Um, so we can clean up, you know, the shaft in the bearing places and hopefully that should be okay. I really wanted to take all of this apart to clean all that out. Um, but without being able to get this shaft out, I don't really see what I can do. Um, you can see that the way that this piece is constructed, there's no room to slide anything over this way to get some space in between the pieces. And this is table pinned on here, and there's no room to slide anything over this way to, get, to open these up to clean out inside there. So, and that's just what we're going to be left with. I'll have to see if I can, you know, use brake clean or something to try and flush as much dirt out of here as I can, um, and that's the, uh, what else we're going to be able to do, um, as none of these hair pins will come out at all. So, um, and that's pretty much all that's left on here. You can see the bottom is basically empty, keyboard's completely out, the rogers are out, you can see the rogers over here, um, that right on these two posts, those are out. This is the register assembly here, you can see those wheels there are the actual register itself, and then these are the carry and total stops. Um, so this goes in like this, and then there's teeth on the bottom of these pieces that engage with the register, and then this either like pivots up and down to either engage or disengage depending on what you're doing. Um, and then these pieces here are the carry trips. So I can do this one handed. You can see how all of these tabs here are in line. So for maybe that one. I'll get into that in a minute. Um, so if I rotate this past nine, you can see how that one tripped and now it's sticking up a little bit. Um, if I do that, it resets it. Or yeah, that should be right. I believe. Um, I don't think which way. I think they're, they're supposed to lock this way. Uh, let's see. Let's take a look at the bottom of this. Maybe that can give us some. And so, yeah, so they rest on these. So basically, when they're all like this, um, the, yeah, the carry should be, you know, primed. And then when this rotates past nine and it trips it, that, I believe that lifts up. And then I believe this will be allowed to slide under that. Um, one of the, any of these tabs will be able to slide under that, which advances, because you can see the teeth are, are part of it there. So when this rotates back, it will advance the teeth one position and drive the next register forward one position. That's how that works. And then um, they just get reset. Pushing all these down resets those. Now, this one on the end, you can see this is not correct. So it looks like the little tab there has broken off, but I don't think that's going to be an issue because this is the last column, so there wouldn't be anything over here to carry to anyway. Um, I can double check when I put it back in, but I believe that's not going to be a problem. Uh, if it is going to be a problem, we'll just have to uh, make up something and solder it on there, um, a little tab to hold this. But I don't think it's going to be a problem because there's nothing, there's no wheel over here for it to carry to anyway. So that shouldn't matter that that carry position doesn't work right. Um, so I'll have to double check on that once we put it back together, but I don't think that's going to be a problem. 
Um, and another thing that these carry tabs do is when you're totaling, the wheels turn backwards and you see they stop there and they won't trip in the opposite direction. So in this direction, you can see they trip the carry. In the backwards direction, they block on the other side of that trip. Um, and that's how it totals. So, you know, this is your normal add direction. It'll rotate this way to add. And then when you total, it'll engage and then spring pressure will rotate these backwards or you know, spring pressure on these, rotate those backwards till they stop. And that brings the register to zero and also transfers the register position into the position of these, of the, the teeth, the tooth segments here. Um, so that way it transfers the number out of the register and onto these risers. And then once everything, once it prints that number, the register drops, leaving everything at zero and allowing these to reset independent of the register. And that's how it does a, a total. And for subtotal, it just leaves the register engaged so that when these come back down, they retransfer the number back into the register going the opposite direction for what it was right out. So not super complicated. Um, there's not even that many parts in this register, just some wheels, you know, one, one, one of these for each column and one of these for each column. And then of course the assembly to hold it all together. So not super complicated. Um, I guess that's a, about it. I'm gonna start doing some cleaning here. Oh, the keyboard also. So I took, you can see I took the bottom plates off the keyboard. Uh, you can see the inside of the keyboard there. I was hoping, I wasn't really expecting it to be the case, but I was hoping that I would be able to pull these keys out without taking the keycaps off, but that's obviously not gonna be the case. You can see that, you can see right there that the key stems are wider than the hole. Oh, I can accurately, accurately show that, but the key stems will not go out through the top even if I take these shafts out. So um, that's not gonna work. Um, so I'm gonna have to see if I can clean the keyboard like this because I'm not gonna be able to pull the keycaps because you can see you know, how much uh, material there is on the shaft compared to how much material there is on the key. So um, I'm pretty confident that trying to pull these are just gonna disintegrate. You can kind of see that's already happening on this one. Oh, and you can see just how thin the key is around the shaft. So there's not, not that much material in the keys. So I don't wanna risk trying to pull those and end up destroying most of them, which I think is what's gonna happen. So I'll just see if I can clean it like that um, and then put that back together. We'll see. Um, hopefully it won't be too bad. So I get most of the dust out of there um, because you know this is kind of a bearing surface the key stem in the key plate keyboard plate so you know kind of want to make sure that it's not dust in there grinding away at those pieces not that there's that much wear on it but you know just something that kind of bothers me so i want to see if i can get that cleaned up pretty well um obviously clean up in, in here as much as i can try and flush as much dirt out of that as i can and put some oil in there um, these aren't really sticky, but, you know, like I said, anywhere that there's dirt in somewhere and it's, you know, a bearing surface, it's going to be grinding in there, which is not something that I want to happen. So, see if I can clean this out as best as I can. Um, I don't think I'm going to disassemble this. You know, everything here seems pretty free, so probably just some light external cleaning of some oil. And, you know, it's not even that dirty, like you can hardly see any dust down in there compared to... You can see all the, all these pieces are all coated in dust and everything. So, um, yeah, probably just some light cleaning on this and oiling, um, deeper cleaning on this and this. Uh, I gotta clean up all of these. These were kind of sticky and I clean up the shafts that they slide on. And I think then we can start putting it back together. Um, I would really like to get this apart, but I just, just can't do it. Um, Tipper pins are blocking me again. So, I think that's enough talking. I'll start cleaning and come back and hopefully we can start assembling this. All right, so I've cleaned up the top of the keyboard. Uh, I think we're ready to put the bottom back on. Um, not a whole lot to do down here anyway since I can't get the keys off the top like I was thinking, but I did clean up the inside of each of these, so um, something at least. So I've got this punch in here holding 
this in place because um, see this is attached to these pieces here which are actually the keyboard locks so you see if I start to pull a key down you can see that one moves and then it detents that key down and then to release the key just release that basically um, it'll work better once the bottom plates aren't holding this in place um, anyway these are attached to this rocking assembly and that's what clears the keyboard at the end but if you take this punch out of here, this can go forward too far, and then these will all fall out of the bottom down there, which is not what I want to happen. So um, let's get the in there holding that. We'll start with the first one this side. Let's go in something like that. I'm not going to worry too much about the um, key stems right now because these will be hinged. So if we get this lined up here. So if we can something like that. And then you'll see this is hinged so I can get the rest of the keys aligned later before putting the bottom one in. But basically just repeat this process all the way across. Um, I oil these up too before I I should put some oil on these keys stems a little bit where they interact with this, just a little bit of oil there. Um, yeah, not high wear, but it's something that I like to do. Um, so yeah, I'll finish putting these back on, put a little oil on these key stems. Now see, there might be like a little bit of dirt here, but that really isn't a big deal because that's not a bearing surface, that's just, you know, that hits against the bottom of these when you push the key down, so not too worried about that. Um, most of them are not that bad anyway. So we'll finish putting these on, um, then we can line up the key stems and put the front pieces on. Now check out that top wheel in. And then for the next one, uh, obviously these have to go down further, the keys are holding them up, but I think we can just, you can reach around to the front and reach under the bottom, I guess I should say, and wiggle each of these keys into place. Oops, let's mess that one up. Like that, and this should ideally slide right in like that. Hold that in place. So I'll go through each column and do that. It shouldn't be too bad. Go across each column to that, and hopefully that should be uh, good for the keyboard. And there the keyboard is, um, with its back all reassembled there. Let's go there. There you there. I still have to put the clip back on right there. Um, this seems to kind of use like a hybrid uh, clip, um, kind of in between like the real old school, just you know, piece of wire and the later C and E clips and. You know, these are like stamped steel, um, like the C and E clips, um, but they're not really springy like C and E clips, so you still have to kind of, like, see how that one's squashed over there, you still have to kind of stretch them out to get them off, and then, you know, squash them closed and you put them back on, like, see how that one's been squashed over. So, kind of like a little evolution on just wrapping, you know, a piece of wire around, um, you know, like the Wales machine and uh, Bowers machine and different machines did, um, but not quite up to the you know, modern C and E clip that we've seen in later machines. So I'll still have to put that, find that last clip, put it back on, it's around here somewhere. I'll do that later. But, so the keyboard lock is this piece here. And then I'll interact with something in the machine. So if we hold that up, and we can enter like one, two, three, and we can clear. A better view here. Actually, if I set this down, right? Work. We'll see. So that will rest on that piece and hold it up so you can enter entering columns that won't hit the table and then clear. So uh, should be good for the keyboard. Um, got a little bit of oil on the surface, I'll have to clean that off and I still have to clean the key uh, key tops yet. 
Um, but this bottom plate, I think, cleaned up pretty well. Uh, just a few places where paint is missing. That's not too bad. So, yeah, oil everything up. Um, I'll probably put some oil on these yet. I have oiled uh, the, you can kind of see the sliding piece there on the inside. Oiled that in each column. Oiled these, which are the um, attached to that. And these are the column stops. So, I can never show you this when the machine's back together, but like if I push down an eight, or if I release the keyboard latch, I push on an eight. Oh. Maybe these don't do what I thought they did. I thought that these would lock the, um, not too sure. I thought that these would lock or release the lock on the riser for that column, but apparently uh, they don't seem to really move. So I'm not quite sure what those do. Let's figure it out and put it back together. But, so I'll set that keyboard off to the side. Um, my next thing I'll do is finish cleaning up this register and that goes in with this piece which I've cleaned up. This was all full of dust and dirt and this kind of goes together something like that where this piece screws into here and this is kind of the register control. This rotates and drops, and it, yeah, drops the register to engage and disengage um, with the Two segments on the rest of the machine. So, um, clean this up. We can put that back in and make sure that the missing tab here is not going to be a problem. But I don't think it's going to be. All right, so we're upside down now, and you can see here is the bottom of the two segments right here that will engage with the register, and the register should slide in. Something, get this spring out of the way. Something like this, I believe. Have to, there we go. That should slide in something like that. And then, this piece, which I have right here, we go in right here. I believe it gets this little lock collar. Don't forget to put that in. It should. Sliding right across. The, I think the grooves on that shaft are getting caught in some of the pieces here. If we can loosen that up somehow. Okay, so there's a cutout in this piece on the side that this is going in, which I believe is correct. Let's see if we can. that go up to engage with the tabs for the carry, I think are getting stuck on the um, the slots of the shaft here. I can see, oh, maybe not. There we go, so we're just not lined up on, just not lined up with the hole on this side. See if we can slide this in now, and now they're gonna get stuck in there, I think. getting stuck on um, the releases on the sliding segments. I'll show you that in a minute. We can... Right, so now... We're just about in here. Okay, so now we're gonna have to... Ooh. 
No, it's getting stuck on this piece over here. So now this is hitting on this. So I need to rotate this, see if I can do that. No, now it's jammed probably because, all right, I'm gonna have to play with this for a minute, but. I should actually. Put this phone and see what it's getting stuck on. I need to return the machine to the home position so that I can slide this in the rest of the way. But it's getting jammed on something here. Just not quite sure what. Also, I got it back in. It turns out that the riser pieces here um, actually were the ones getting stuck. And some of them still seem a bit stuck yet. Um, they have a little finger that sticks at the bottom and they're getting stuck on that rod and not retracting back and that was jamming the uh, return of the machine. So um, that's all that was. This is back in. Um, depending on, you know, how this is set, you can see it moves a little bit. Might actually be all of its movement. It's not much, just enough to engage and disengage, you can see. That is engaged and then disengaged. And it looks like the this broken piece here won't be a problem. So if you look down here, you can see that there's an extra tab there not engaged with any of these tabs here. So um looks like that won't be a problem. Um there's nothing in that column for it to carry to, so I'm showing the right thing here. So that broken tab on the bottom, not releasing this extra carry, it looks like it's not going to be an issue. There's going to be nothing for that carry to do anyway. If we flip this back over, um, still have a lot to reassemble over here on the time. You can see this piece is loose, this piece is loose. I believe the keys attached to those, um, the total uh, subtotal keys. Um, this piece was completely frozen initially. Um, but I loosened that up and oiled it. I believe this spring attaches to it there. Um, this piece, I have to remember where this uh, spring attaches to, that's another variable. So we can't really um, test out adding it without getting more of this reassembled here. Um, actually, the tool and throw keys go up here. These are add and non-add down here. Um, so what I'm probably, what I'm probably gonna do next is work on reassembling some of this timing mechanism over here. Um, and then once that's reassembled, we can get over to these pieces, which go in to the risers that go in here. And those are what actually engage with the keyboard. See these little pins that stick out or what hit the pegs that stick out the bottom of the keyboard. Um, those have to be cleaned up. This is just a guide that goes in the bottom down here, um, all the way Kind of down in there, and that is a guide for the bottom of these. That's all that is. Um, you can see um, here's some of the. This is part of the printing mechanism. Here's some of the levers. Um, this is part of the printing mechanism. This is also part of the printing mechanism. Here's some of the totaling levers. Here's a spring. Um, it's more of the total or subtotal keys. So. I'm um, probably going to look at reassembling some of that, get that all figured out. These are the add and non-add keys. Um, there's this guy. So, probably work on figuring some of that out, see if we can at least get the machine to, you know, add in total, and see where we go from there. Okay, so making some progress here. Um, got these pieces back in, um, oiled up. Everything in there seems to be working fine. Got the levers here back on the side, the keys here, the um, levers here for total and subtotal. The totaling mechanism, this is really weird and it took me a bit to figure it out, but it seems to be working, so I think I got it back together right. Um, but just very strange. Um, the keyboard, I put it in and tried it out a few times, and the issue that I'm having is 
and you can see this piece here rocks then it has a stop against this um, bar here and the issue that I'm having is sometimes this hits the C clip or the E clip whatever and doesn't always return all the way home it's going to do it now but Dribble this a little bit. Yeah, see like that now it's hit against the clip there and doesn't want to return all the way home. Um, sometimes it seems to work most of the time, but sometimes it still gets stuck. So I think what I'm going to do is just remove that clip from there um, just to make it reliable. Um, the shaft isn't going to go anywhere because when you put it the keyboard in here, it's hitting against either side. So it can't really fall out. So I'm not really worried about that. Um, I don't remember whether that clip, w this clip was on here when, when I took it apart or whether it had one of the other, um, you know, the wire bend clips like I showed before. Uh, this is the only C clip that came out of the machine. Um, but uh, so I'm not sure if that was there originally, but just to make it reliable, I'm going to remove that clip just to make sure this lever always returns all the way home. And the reason is because if this doesn't return all the way home, um, that is the backstop for, let me show this, these pieces, so see if that gets stuck like that, these will be up too high, and what that will do is that will allow the risers to rise in the columns where you haven't entered a number. So for example, if you enter like one, two, three, what you're going to end up with then is all nines, one, two, three, um, because the latches that hold these back aren't all the way down. So just making it reliable, I'm going to remove that clip. Um, I'm going to put the keyboard back in, hopefully for the last time. Like I said, I oiled up all this stuff down here. Um, take a look at the side here. So, this is the uh, non-print key. No, this is the non-add key. This is the non-print key. Uh, this is total and this is subtotal. And basically the way that this works is so, actually I'll put the keyboard back in first so I can never fit a little bit better that way. So we've transferred that clip from this one to that one. And basically this just sets right in. Just sets right in like that. And we've got these two shafts that run through. That, and then another one up here. Not to get this lined up here, but if I can get this shaft lined up. There we go, and then have to move these forwards so that the clip will get past, and that's in. And then just gets these uh, little snap type wire clips on this side, which makes it very convenient to remove. I'll put the other one on later. Um, so, demonstrate here. So, doing a normal operation, the register is disengaged. Well, right now it's, in, in, it's engaged and you can tell, um, see, watch this piece right here. So when that drops down, the register disengages. So as you start the cycle, this cam here on this, or this roller here on this cam pushes that down. So the register is disengaged right now. And now, once you reach the end of the stroke, um, that cam will rotate back the other way on the back stroke and the register will engage. See, now the register has engaged and now it will be adding whatever you would have entered on the keyboard. Um, and basically the way that it transfers the keyboard to the register is the, I think I explained this before, but the pieces that I just showed before, the rails under here, um, those have little pins on them that hit against the pins on the bottom of the keys. So, um, when you rotate the handle, it rotates the shaft that runs through here. And specifically, it rotates this piece. This piece is attached to the shaft. So, see, as I sort of cycle here, that piece rotates down, and that um, 
it has either it has springs attached. No, it doesn't have springs attached. But basically, that releases the print heads here. You can see these are free now against their springing back. Um, that bar releases them. So if I complete the cycle again, watch as that comes back around. See it pushes. That when that comes up, it pushes on a the back piece of these discs here and pushes them back to the home position. So all of these are sprung backwards. Um, take a better look at this side. You can see the spring right there attaches to that and runs all the way back down to a rail back there that holds all the springs. So basically the operation is when you pull the handle, it, really, it rotates that, uh, that locking bar, which allows these to spring back until they're stopped. In this case, they're stopped by these levers because I haven't entered anything on the keyboard. If I enter a key, notice how this lifts up to release that lock, and now that will rotate back until it's stopped by the bottom of the key, hitting the pin on the, um, the riser piece there. So basically that's how that works, and uh, as we mentioned before, these pieces also have the teeth in the bottom of them that engage with the register. So as these are rotating, they're both, um, you know, rotating back to whatever to whatever stop they have, whether they're stopped at zero here or they're stopped at a number on the keyboard. And that rotation corresponds to lining a number on the print head here up with the page and also rotating the wheel on the register an appropriate number of places to add that number to the register. Um, so that's pretty common to basically how uh, most of these ad listing machines work. It's some combination of that, of, um, you know, so some sliding piece that gets stopped by the keyboard, um, which allows the front head to move to a position and also add to the register at the same time. Um, so that's uh, pretty basic how that works. Um, now, as far as non ad and Toral and stuff, Basically, for non-add, all that it does is if you latch this key down, you notice this piece here rotates a little bit. And what that's going to do is, when I run the machine, this handle is about to fall off. When I run the machine, make sure you can see everything. So the register drops out, so it's disengaged now. This will come back to normal. And now, on the return stroke, watch this pin here, which you can't see. This pin right here will hit against this ratchet here, and that will push this pe this peg, which will disengage the register. So watch as I come back. See that? Now the register. Oh, yeah. See now the register has moved down. Now the register is disengaged, and now that would because the register is disengaged on the backstroke when it's normally engaged, it would cause the. Um, number not to be added to the register because the register is never engaged with those teeth anytime the teeth are moving. Um, you know, it's disengaged on the forward stroke and disengaged on the back stroke, so nothing is entered into the register. Now, here's the weird part when I push the Toro button, it pulls down the non add key. It's an interesting setup there. So, basically, what this is doing is the total key is making use of the non add key to prevent the register from disengaging. So now the register will stay engaged. I can reach that now. The register will stay engaged now because I pushed the total key and at this point it will be reading the number from the register. So basically you, these are now allowed to spring back until the register has reached zero. And I think I described that earlier how there's a little uh, catch um, and a little tooth on each register wheel that when the register rotates backwards, um, as it would be doing now because it's engaged on the forward stroke of the handle, the, the register is allowed to rotate backwards until that peg hits a catch and then it stops at zero. So right now the register is empty, so these aren't going to rise at all, but that's how it would normally be working. Um, these would be rotating backwards until they're stopped at zero. And so the register is engaged and it would be reading out now, and now it would be printing the total. And now the register is going to disengage. And when the register disengages, it leaves all the numbers at zero. Disengage, which allows these to free 
float, which you saw they all sprung all the way up to nine because now the register is not holding them back and the keyboard is not holding them back, so they all spring up to nine. And that's done by this non uh, non add key being engaged by the total key, causes the register to disengage on the backstroke and say at zero. So, well, kind of interesting actually. Um, how that pushes that down. Um, I definitely see some instances of that, like of, of like value engineering in this machine. Um, this machine was designed to be like this name is support the engine name was portable adding machine so we wanted to keep it light and probably cheap um just have the, the total key engage the non-add key to uh prevent register to disengage the register on the back that's kind of interesting and the difference with the subtotal is subtotal basically does the same thing as total except that it leaves the register engaged on the backstroke so that the number that was just read onto the print heads on the forward stroke is transferred back into the register and left there for you to continue using. Um, so you can see this lever here is what drives the print mechanism. So as this rotates, I'm sure you've seen that, but as this rotates here, it drives that forward and then this catch here is attached to this piece which is attached to the shaft that drives the register. So, or not the register, the printer rather. Um, it's pretty, there's a pretty like hard force printing um, you can see how it really impresses the, I think you can see anyway, how it really impresses the number into the page. So um, I don't think there's any way to adjust that. It makes me slightly uncomfortable that it is so hard. If there's so much force on that and there's so much force on this little peg here pushing that. Um, like I said, I don't see any way to adjust that. I was kind of thinking that you know, maybe there'll be some kind of release where this gets, when this gets to a certain pressure, it pops up and, you know, doesn't exert that much force, but I can't really see a way that that would happen. Um, but this is kind of concave, so it basically latches into this catch here and there's really, you can't really pull it out when it's being driven. So I'm not too sure about that. Um, you know, I also have to figure out where this spring hooks to. It's something I haven't uh, figured out yet. Now, other than that, it seems to work. So we can do a little demonstration here. So if I do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, five, eight, seven, six, five, four. And if any carries are set, um, it'll require you, you, you to do a blank crank. So right now I can't push the total key, so I have to do a blank crank. And then I can push the total key. And didn't print that one so well. You can see, you can just, I'm not sure if you'll be able to make it out, but it does say, 3330 with a little dash indicate total and it looks like it doesn't do leading zero suppression on total um, I was thinking that it does make sense because we didn't see any evidence Anywhere of a mechanism that would do leading zero suppression on a total um, And you watch some of my other videos like on um, I think I started on the Burroughs class 3 and the whales adding machine um, They have those ones which are much more expensive machines than this have uh, catches which will you know block leading zeros but allow trailing zeros to be printed um, but we didn't see any evidence of that in this machine so it kind of makes sense that it doesn't suppress those on total um, it does on adding because any column you don't enter a number in um, you know locks out that column from rising but for totaling um, there is no no such thing like this in the no such thing that in this machine so Kind of makes sense. Um, yeah, so just gotta figure out where that spring goes. Um, I guess another one does seem to work. Uh, you can see I replaced the um, string here. It's kind of a I'm not a big fan of that setup. Um, as you saw, the original string broke, so 
I tried to, the string that I had wasn't as thick as the original one, so I tried to like, I think I put four um, pieces in there and I kind of twisted them together to, and that's about as thick as the original one, so we'll have to see how it holds up. Um, these are just kind of like crimp on things here, they just have like little fingers that, you know, you crimp over to hold that in there and they are showing some signs of um, fatigue since you know, I had to unbend them and then rebend them to put the new string in there and who knows if somebody pressed the string before that. So we'll have to see how it holds up. Um, if these fail or the string breaks again, I'll have to come up with another solution. But uh, for now, we'll go with that. Um, still have to clean the keycaps. Um, got a little bit of oil on the top key plate here, so I have to clean that up. Um, but other than that, I think we are looking pretty good once I figure out where that extra spring goes. Um, and so, yeah, just to finish up the explanation here, we explained how total and uh, non-print work. Uh, subtotal basically just the same thing as total where it um, you know, releases the catches here to allow the keyboard to not have an effect on the risers here and you know, keeps the register engaged on the um, backstroke and then on the forward stroke it basically leaves everything alone um, to leave the register engaged like it would normally be on the, or I should say, on the forward stroke is this way. So when you push subtotal and engages the register on the forward stroke, you can see how it just pushes that over so that it's not going to be disengaged by this cam. Um, and then it leaves it engaged on the back shot like it normally would be doing a normal cycle. So that's all that does. And non-add, which is, or non-print rather, which is this key, all that that does is that has a big long piece here that runs all the way to the back. And you can see all that it does is it disengages um, this lever from driving the print mechanism. So all that that's going to do is this is going to go forward and not... Um, the print mechanism and all. So that's all that does. Release that. Um, so yeah, I hope that makes sense how all this works. Um, like I said, it took me a little bit to figure out how all this put out together because it's a really weird operating sequence. Um, now it engages with the non non print or non add key and everything. And how that works is basically this is the total key here and it has a little tab that sticks out the bottom. And then there's a little tab on this disc, so when you push that, the little tab on the bottom of this pushes the little tab on this disc, and then that disc has a little arm that comes over here and pushes down the non-add key. So, yeah, kind of a weird setup. Um, I need to have to put back together the kind of weird dampener they have here. Flip this back around. Um, that was this guy, which is just a big slab of metal uh, cast on, I'm assuming. And it also incorporates this piece and this piece. And it seems like all that this is, is just, you know, our big uh, flywheel here. So that, you know, if you let go of the handle, it's going to take some time for this flywheel to, you know, get up to speed. But I guess it's all that they're counting on for the dampening. And then it has this little friction brake here, or friction clutch, whatever you want to call it which goes on this, or I still have to clean this up, um, but that basically goes on there like that. And then the cutout here in this um, catches on this pin here. So basically, as far as I can tell, that's to allow so that when you get to the end of the cycle, um, it basically allows this to freewheel like that um, somewhat so that you're not, because you know this takes time to get up to speed and then once it's up to speed, it's gonna have momentum to keep going. So. Um, this just allows us to kind of free wheel down a little bit and not, you know, jam at the end of the cycle. Um, so, good this piece is cleaned up, put that back on, and I think I just have to clean up the base yet over there. And then we're on to cleaning up the case and, and the ribbon mechanism and all that stuff. Alright, so everything's all back installed. Uh, so I'll have to clean up the tops of the keycaps here. And see if I can find some replacement keys for that. But let's just see what we get. Um, there's 
you can see, our total is correct and it does print the leading zeros. Um, looks like it's because it looks like it's pushing the page in so hard it's getting some of the ribbon texture, so that's kind of unfortunate. But I guess I can't say anything anything to do about that, so I guess that's just the way it has to be. It's definitely readable, you know, you can definitely read what it's printing, so it's not really an issue, it's just kind of weird, but anyway, so we can test out, let's do something like 45, and we can add that in, and then if we do something like 55 with a non-add, it should print but not add it, and you'll see in a minute, but it does do that, and it also prints a marker. Um, so if we do a subtotal now, we're still at 45, which is correct. Our subtotal works. We can do a non-print, so let's add 5 and do a non-print. And now if we do a total, we should have 50. Oops, we have to do a blank crank for... And there we go. I'll put this out so you can see. So there we did our 45, and then 55 was a non-add, so it just puts a little mark there. Same as a total mark, um, the only mark it has. And then we did a subtotal for 45, and then we did a blank crank, and then um, total was 50 because we added 5 with a non-print. So yeah, everything uh, seems to work, but we can try to repeat. We can do 25 times 5, so we do 25, and we set that to repeat. Now if we pull the handle five times, we should, oops, push that on better, we should get a total of 125, and we do, oops, I guess I ran out of paper, that's fine. Um, so yeah, that seems to work just fine. Everything seems to work just fine. Um, like I said, I got a find some keys, clean up the keyboard, and also I'm missing the paper holder rod thing. It's around here. So I'm missing the, the thing that goes in there to hold the paper. So um, I have to find out something for that. But other than that, it seems to work just fine. Um, and you can see I put the new ribbon in here. You can see how it goes it's from the bottom wheel across and then kind of like flips diagonally and then up, flips diagonally again, and then back to the uh, take-up wheel. And then that's the one that um, is the printing side, and this is just a return, so there's just a plate behind that. Um, this is the ribbon advance, so I'm going to pull it that way. It'll take up on the bottom. Pull it that way, it'll take up on the top. You can see that you can adjust it there, but the bottom doesn't match it. The top ratchets, and you can't turn it backwards. If you flip it, then this one is free and the bottom one ratchets. So as I wrap the most of them on the bottom, I'll have it set to take up on the bottom. Um, I did my best to clean this up. Um, it looks like it's some corrosion. I didn't want to come off, but it seems to work fine. It's advancing the ribbon, so uh, put a bunch of oil in there. It seems to be okay. So let me see if I can um, just finish up the cosmetics there. And that should be it for this one. All right, so I dug through my big bag of keys and I came up with a um, print. Stick that on. Maybe. Need some modification, it's not going to go on. Looks like it should go on though. Well, I have to modify that one. And subtotal, which is the wrong color, but I think it'll still work. Actually, no, it won't because the slot is no, the slot is this way. It should work. Maybe. There we go. That won't work. So this one looks like you know I need to make the. I looked at it. Looks like a cross slot, but you see one way is fatter than the other, so it wants to go on like that, which is obviously wrong, so I'll have to see if I can widen that slot out a little bit, so it'll go on like that, and I think it should be good. Like I said, it was the wrong color, but that's what I just have to do for now. And for the paper holder, I just took a paper clip and um, 
bent it. It looks like it doesn't matter because this is resting against the bottom anyway because it's got this long slit here. So oh, whatever. Maybe it's holding something up. And I took a paper clip and bent the ends over to hold it in place. So that should work. So let me see if I can fix this key up so we can use it. And I think it should be good. I also got that kitty on, so I think that'll be okay. Subtotal and total. So yeah, um, these keys cleaned up pretty well. A little bit of paper towel dust left on there. Um, some of them are a little bit stained like that one. You can kind of see a little bit of yellow uh, staining on it, but it's not too bad. So are we okay? Um, so yeah, this is the um, portable adding machine as made by the Corona typewriter company. And like I said, it made it look portable by today's standards, but if you compare it to something like this, you can definitely see where the uh, portability comes in. Let's get an idea here. That machine weighs over 60 pounds. Um, this one's probably like 15 or 20, it's not too bad. You can hear the difference. You know, when you operate this one. But, yeah. So, I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.